Yes, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to our webinar series, The Power of Sourcing. And we're halfway done, almost halfway done, because today's our fifth episode uh, in our webinar series. My name is Adrian Kolf, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Metcher, co-founder of Pantala. I'm an investor and public speaker, but more importantly, I will be your host today. If you have any questions or any comments, just write them in the chat and we'll respond to them at the end of the session with Brian Fink. Um, for now, let me know where you're based, share your LinkedIn profile so we can connect with you um, and keep this as interactive as possible. Now, before I officially introduce Brian, let me tell you a little bit more about what we do with Matcher. Because with Matcher, we provide remote embedded talent teams to fast growing companies. We work for companies like TikTok, Booking, Stripe, Revolut, Miro, and Grammarly, and help them skill up their engineering and go-to-market teams by offering them dedicated teams of sourcers and recruiters. So sourcing is truly at the heart of everything that we do. And that's also the reason why we start to organize these webinar series to learn from the best and to actually educate ourselves. So if you are hiring, or if you could use some help with hiring or know someone that's hiring, please let us know because we can already start on a monthly rolling contract. And um, if you haven't followed us yet, please follow us on LinkedIn or on YouTube and subscribe to your newsletter to stay up to date on all the latest content that we're producing. And now without further ado, I'm excited to welcome on stage, Brian Fink. Wow, I don't know if I can follow that up, Adrian. I'm gonna certainly try. Um, real quick, uh, my name is Brian Fink. I am excited to be here. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, his. And I think that's important to identify at the beginning yeah. of the conversation. For those of you who are, who are listening, I am a white male. Uh, I have brown hair and I am wearing a blue shirt. I am making these announcements because the team at Matcher and I, we want to make sure that we are bringing to you an inclusive environment, that we want to make sure that we're not excluding anyone, that everyone here is welcome. About that welcoming, Adrian said for people to let us know where you're coming in from. Uh, I want to know where everybody's from. I want everybody to put in their LinkedIn profile. This is a great opportunity for us to network together and to bring a large world and make it a much smaller place. So I'm hoping that I'm going to get to do that today with Adrian and his team at Matcher. Brian. Such an honor to have you here as our first US-based speaker. And, and I follow you on LinkedIn and you've been like on my horizon for a long period of time. And to actually have you here today and speak for us is close to like a dream coming true, uh, Brian. Um, and I know you're very busy. You do multiple talks and multiple keynotes constantly. But when I reach out to you, you immediately said, yes, let's do it. So I'm super happy to have you, Brian. Awesome. And, you know, I'm excited that I'm going to get to follow in the footsteps of somebody who I have great esteem for. Vanessa Rath was your guest last week. Yeah. If you've got the opportunity uh, to go back and watch that recording on YouTube, that is some powerful storytelling. And that is a powerful adventure that Vanessa takes you on. And if you're gearing up for next week and you're like, forget about you, Brian, I'm here for Batman. Batman, uh, Michael Batman Cohen will be with you next week. I'm yeah. excited about that. But Let's, let's go ahead and hop into this because like my energy level is here yes. and I'm about to go through the roof. Yes, I love it. All right, guys. Enjoy. Ask any question that you have in the, in the chat. Brian, the floor is all yours and we'll introduce you now. All right, everybody. Uh, if you're just tuning in, I had started the conversation by giving my pronouns, which are he, him, his. I'd also describe myself as being a white male uh, with brown hair and I'm wearing a blue shirt. And the reason I did that is because I want to get beyond the pejorative today. That's actually the topic that we're going to talk about is how to get beyond the pejorative and how to build an inclusive or how to pursue inclusivity while broadening diversity 
in our sourcing activities. So real quick, for those of you who tune into me regularly, you know that if this was a typical Brian Fink sourcing presentation, we'd probably begin with a slide like this, where I would tell you about all these bullion operators and how we're gonna go beyond paywalls. Okay, that's, that's fine, and we could still do that. But I also, if this was a normal presentation, I'd probably say something like this, that I wanna start with a Boolean uh, command or operator like the site command. I wanna put a keyword next to it. I wanna exclude a few keywords. And then we're off to the races. We're ready to do our search. Since this is about diversity and inclusion, however, I might try to wow you with a really cool search string of keywords, especially if I was looking for female engineers across the globe. Um, these are a few of my favorite organizations to look at when I'm trying to descriptively understand uh, a candidate that identifies as woman X or identifies as female. And then I would tell you about some cool Slack communities because everybody knows that I love to recruit on Slack. Two of the communities I would tell you about is maybe Out in Tech, uh, which is a 5103C that allows you the opportunity to connect with and invest in a community of 30,000 members strong who are interested in growing their career and their network. Or uh, the Chicago Tech Diversity uh, Slack channel, which is really there to help uh, address some of the inadequacies and supremacy that exists uh, that pushes down underrepresented communities where everybody's welcome. But this is not a pure sourcing presentation. I'm sorry if you showed up for that. You showed up two days late. I'm here to tell you my story about something that happened to me when I was sourcing on Slack. Um, a couple of years ago, uh, back in 2020, at the height of uh, COVID, at the height of George Floyd, when everybody was putting black squares on their Instagram pages uh, to, to, to show their solidarity and that they were committed to uh, racial justice, um, something happened to me when I was sourcing on Slack. And it wasn't that I was harassed. It wasn't that I was harangued. It was that I realized I was doing this all wrong. Is I was jumping into a Slack workspace called the Techeria, which is um, really focused on uh, lifting up uh, people of color, people specifically who identify as Latinx, um, and lifting them up and having them have a safe place to collaborate. Now, I'll be honest with you, before 2020, I was that guy that I was like, oh, what, what honeypot can I go to that I can find talent and I can uh, connect with? And I, I want to use a dirty word here. I want to say, who can I hunt down? Is that I had gotten to the point where I had reduced my job to simply putting butts in seats and not recognizing the fact that I was working with individuals to help them move their lives forward. And that's why this Slack community is so dear to me and so important. Because as I went to sign up to get into that community, to get into that workspace, it said something. Where Techeria members and leads collaborate with partners, allies, and each other. Hmm. Let's just stop there for a second. How many times have we barged into communities, communities that are not our homes and we've acted like they're our homes. We've put our feet up. We've, um, we've acted like we're the job fairy that we're just gonna drop jobs from the cloud. That's wrong. And it took me kind of reading this paragraph to understand the word, two vital words, safe space. And it's a safe space for Latinx professionals in tech to thrive and to grow and to elevate each other. Newsflash. I am not Latinx. Um, uh, I barely speak Spanish, and that's a microaggression, and we'll get to those in a second. I'm sorry that I made that. The reality of it is, is that I don't identify as Latinx, and I can still be a member of this community if I would be somebody who'd be focused on jobs, announcements, events, and allyship. So to become a member, I had to become an ally. And what happened there made me stop about, think about all these other places that I'm going and I'm looking for for talent, right? You know, I was going to Instagram, Stack Overflow, 
Google Podcasts, Medium, Meetup, LinkedIn, GitHub. And instead of exploring those channels as an ally, I now had to stop and pause and go on a different journey. And that is what brings us to the journey that I went on. I want to bring my journey to you so that you don't make the same mistakes that I was making and so that you respect people and you respect the place where they're at and you understand your privilege and your responsibility to help raise all boats. Sorry if I got choked up there for a second. Um, your DEI sourcing strategy should be allyship. It should involve five key elements, an appreciation for inclusion, building a climate of inclusivity and inclusive communications, championing change, being a person who's going to stand up and be counted, distilling for action, doing more than standing up, rallying all those others around your cause. And then finally, just finally, if we knock out and we understand those four key areas, then we can source for diversity. So let's talk about appreciating inclusion. Um, I, I'm, a big, I'm a big reader. Um, I think if you follow me, um, and we may give out a few books here today in the Q&A session, um, you know that uh, I read a lot. Um, there are a lot of book house, bookshelves in my house that, uh, that I have a new one that is empty, which will be filled up soon. But about filling up, I need to fill myself up. I need to change my mindset. And the best way to do that sometimes is to borrow another person's brain, like Imbram Kendi's or Robin D'Angelo, to really understand what it meant to be a racist or what it meant to be a sexist or what it meant to be xenophobic. And allyship or homophobic and allyship begins with an awareness of these issues and experiences of these disenfranchised groups, these people that because of systemic racism, because of systemic structure, the white power structure of our culture, they may not, they may not get the same standing or appreciation that other groups do. It's acknowledging those differences. It's not saying something like blue lives matter, red lives matter, or all lives matter. It's realizing the power of saying something like all black, all Black Lives Matter and understanding the precipice and the credence that that has to carry. Individuals in this stage, when you're appreciating inclusion, means that you're identifying that privilege, just as I gave you the example that I just did now, and really trying to understand how it impacts and contributes to that systemic bias in society and in our organizations. I made a microaggression earlier when I made the comment like, I don't speak Spanish that well. Microaggressions are an unconscious bias uh, training intervention that needs to take place to help people erase their awareness and help them to elevate their behavior to understand um, what a microaggression might be. I heard a lot of these growing up as the, as the only Jewish kid in Southwest Georgia. Um, especially maybe directed towards my sister. She's pretty for a Jewish girl. You know, some of that racism is so subtle that neither the victim nor the perpetrator really understand what's going on. And that may be particularly toxic for people of color or people who identify with a marginalized group. A statement, an action, an incident. You have pretty hair. Can I touch it? Um, these can be regarded as an instance of indirect or subtle or unintentional discrimination against a member of a marginalized group such as that racial or ethnic minority. And I bring these up because I, wanted, I want us to work past them. We're all smarter than that. We all care more than that. So we want to now build an inclusive climate and community and for those individuals um, to 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 be aware of who they are and let them speak their story, have that openness to demonstration of behaviors. Um, as you're in this phase, you are helping to build an inclusive environment, whether it's in your home, whether it's in your office, whether it's in your organization, by gathering those diverse perspectives and really empathizing, trying to put yourself in their shoes, actively listening, not playing the white savior, communicating transparently and showing that humility and that authenticity. At this phase, individuals like yourself 
you tend to support DEI, DEIB within the scope of influence. And you may be uncomfortable about doing a webinar like the one I'm doing now or speaking out or challenging these policies. And that's where you realize that there's six really important behaviors that lead to meaningful engagement. There's empathy, which we've already talked about just limitedly, but I wanna expand that and say that you need to have a compassion towards others' perspective, regardless of their background. Um, I, I said at the beginning, and grew up in rural South Georgia. You may say, Brian is just some backwards or backwoods uh, person from flyover country. Okay, stop and put yourself in my shoes and have that empathy there. Relationship building. I want you to be able to effectively build connections with people from a wide variety of diverse backgrounds. Doesn't matter if they're from California, doesn't matter if they're from South Africa, doesn't matter if they came here as an immigrant. You want to establish that affinity and that trust. Open-mindedness. You know, I got into a LinkedIn tiff earlier today, uh, totally unrelated. Like, I'm just now thinking about it, like that we were going to have this conversation, is that approach things with a beginner's mind. It's easy for those of us who practice yoga and meditation to sometimes think about that, but it's really coming across as being non-judgmental with dealing with others and avoiding those assumptions and predeterminations that those discriminatory behaviors and treating each individual as an individual, each situation as a separate situation. And then there's resilience. You got to put on a little bit of arm, armor. You got to remain tranquil and calm. You're going to hear some things. You're going to be called some names because of the risk that you're taking to usurp somebody else's power. Be poised, be controlled, be calm. And realize that you can do this with flexibility, that you are going to adapt your approach to different backgrounds, to different situations, to different circumstances, to different solutions, and that you're going to speak to their needs, not yours. You're going to seek to understand so that you can be understood. And then again, an orientation towards learning. Uh, I kind of jumped ahead there when I said, seek to understand, to be understood. I got caught up. You want to take steps to really fill in the gaps with your knowledge and your skill set. You want to make sure that, that you're not just doing something passive aggressively, that you're really actively taking uh, a, a strong, committed stance to open yourself up to new experiences and diverse information. Two of those books that did that for me, uh, Abby Wambach's, uh, Man, this was this is a powerful book on tape. I listened to it and her her call for advocacy, um, and 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 it really gets me going. Uh, and also Mason Funk with showing me the heroes of the LGBTQ movement, and by showing me a living hero and some individuals that we're standing on their shoulders, is that we're focused on advocacy. In both, in both reads or listens. This is where we've got to take the stage and take our behavioral commitment to another level. This is where we have to be on the lookout for opportunities to affect change formally and informally. Organizational change companies, they don't change quickly. I mean, I think about the United States, about the diversity of executive boardrooms and how, uh, how long that's taken, right? It's, it's not quick, it's not easy. Um, but it won't happen at all if we don't try, if we don't advocate at this stage, if we don't mentor, you know, uh, mentor a female or mentor an African-American uh, person who is emerging, has never had that chance before. Um, we've got to work together to create that climate that supports all these behaviors at a minimum you got to challenge your organizational leaders. You've got to ask them how they're going to achieve allyship, how they're going to model their leadership to identify those opportunities and use this power to push forward. And then it's action time. Action time. This is the opportunity that we have where we can, where we can speak up and speak out, where we can show trust, purpose, respect, bridging, empathy. We can ask a group. 
How do you want to be helped? What can I do to, to raise your group, to raise that boat, right? And you can try this as a group effort. Sometimes it's easier to do things as a group, right? Um, let me go back through these, is that trust. When you're reaching out to a, a group and you want to be an ally, do not use typical recruiting jargon and bullshit, okay? The first instance that they have with your organization should be one that is on their terms. So follow the rules of the group. If you're joining a Slack community, like I did with Techaria, read the rules, understand, know how you can be inclusive. Number two, purpose. Understand the purpose behind the community. The community is not there to be your charity case. The community is there to raise the voices and connectivity of its membership. Respect. I always like to think it's a good idea to reach out to the leader of the group and say, hey, what do you need from me? Or how can I get involved? Put your hand in. Don't put your hands out. Bridging. Focus on relationships. If you say you're going to do something, do it. Build trust. Don't approach things from a give-get scenario. Give, give, give. Empathy. Man, I've, 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 I've beaten this one, right? Put yourself in somebody else's shoes and, and recognize it's their safe place. How would you feel if somebody walked into your home or into your community center and just acted like they own the environment? Don't do that. That's bad. Ask. How are you going to integrate into the group? Are you going to, if you're attending a meetup, are you going to show up or are you going to put up? And what I mean by put up is, I mean, are you going to say, hey, uh, I work at I work at Twitter, I work at McAfee, I work at AWS. Those are all organizations I've been a part of. And then I'm excited about their missions and what they've done for diversity. Do I show up and bring a bunch of swag or do I show up and bring a speaker who can talk to that community and have a visceral conversation about what it's like to work in these type of environments. And lastly, I said, do this as a group, coordinate with team members um, on which groups, you know, you're going to, you're going to work with how you're going to work with them and how you can manage this to have the best outcome. All right. Now this is what everybody came for. They didn't come for the lecture. They came for sourcing for diversity. Here's the deal. I wanted us to get beyond the pejorative of just saying that we want to have diversity. We want to have a diverse slate of candidates before we decided that we were going to engage in communities. And that's what we're going to do today is that I've chosen three areas where we're going to engage. We're going to talk uh, about sourcing on Meetup. We're going to talk about sourcing on Facebook. And we're going to talk about sourcing on Google Podcasts. So I'm pulling out that first slide and I'm saying site colon meetup.com parentheses developer or engineer. Um, I'm able to tell Google, hey, Google, I want you to bring me back meetup groups that feature developers or engineers. All right, um, Adrian, I'm going to give away a book. Um, the book that I'm going to give away is actually going to be cast. And I'm wondering if anybody can put in the chat some additional search terms that we may use to honor diversity. I'm waiting for those to come in. Any search terms? I'm not seeing anybody in the chat. Okay. So let's say that instead, uh, so let's say for diversity terms, we want to... Um, Let's say that we want to look for Black or Latinx communities. So we say, hey, Google, only bring me back meetup groups that meet this criteria, right? So adding diversity search terms helps us find diverse meetup groups. So I've added to that parentheses Black or Latinx, close parentheses. And when we've added that to our search string, while it, it produced fewer results, it yields a dynamic listing of prospects uh, that are Carly. I love that. Carly, you're getting a book. I'm, I'm with you. You and I are making that happen. Somebody get Carly's information so that we can get a book out to Carly or Carly DM me on LinkedIn. So I can send you a book. All right. Um, 
what and, and actually Carly, I love the fact that you said LGBTQ plus. We're gonna work on, we're gonna do a search that is going to specifically look at how we can engage in that community and how we can listen to their stories. So, real quick, as I'm going to meet up, um, I'm able to find uh, Black Software Engineers of New York. Uh, this is a group that's in Brooklyn. Uh, they've got about uh, about 3,200 uh, members, and it clearly says, "Hey, this group is supposed to facilitate the growth of Black software developers, whether it be collaborating on a startup idea or helping a member to clarify their understanding of a library." The community is open to everyone. Okay, again, newsflash. I am not a black software engineer. What I can do, though, is I can reach out to Devin Jackson here, who is the organizer of the event, and ask Devin, how do I support your community? What do I do to act as an ally, right? Consequently, um, if I go into the meetup group itself, I can see where there's the opportunity for us to actually, uh, there's a little bubble that allows us to send a DM to individuals. As you notice, uh, there's Leanne, there's Caden, there's Akil. Um, these individuals are people that are members of the group. Maybe I should read the rules first before I reach out to them and find out if that's okay. And then there's Facebook. You know, I'm not using any complex search terminology. I'm actually in the Facebook uh, search field. I'm not doing site command facebook.com. You could do that, but I'm just staying inside of it. And I'm saying female developers and I'm seeing more and I'm looking for groups that support female developers that have a interest in raising the voices of female entrepreneurs. Consequently, I could also do black engineers in Seattle, Washington, and do it by location. And I noticed that there's web developers, programmers, and engineers in tech. And I can specifically see that they've got about 2.6, uh, uh, two, uh, about 3,000 members. My question is, how do I connect with them? Well, I would reach out to the person who's in charge of the group, ask for their permission to join, and see what I could bring to the group to help them grow their interests. Podcasts. Who here has a favorite podcast? Anybody? All right. So um, I pulled up a few of my favorite podcasts uh, or a few podcasts. A few of them are my favorite, like Daily TED Talks or Planet Money. But also Google served me up um, some podcasts that uh, celebrate Black History Month, which uh, here in the U.S. we have just finished celebrating. Um, now we are celebrating Women's History Month. Um, Rick Roll. Yeah, I, I love Rich Roll. I'm, I'm an aspiring marathon runner, Maria. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go site colon podcast.google.com. And it's going to specifically tune me into only podcasts that are published to Google, right? And then I'm going to go at Gmail in quotes to say that I want to find those that are attached to uh, a Gmail address where I can message the author or the speaker on the podcast. And then I'm going to open up parentheses and look for LGBTQ or advocacy or ally and close parentheses. And if you'll notice, there's Out Sports, which is a leading LGBTQ sports publication. I can email Jim to tell my story. Maybe I want to hear Jim's story. Maybe I want to hear the story of my prospective candidate. I can listen to them here. I can become inculcated into this community. LGBTQ stories, it's with Kevin. Um, I can follow them on Instagram. Uh, it's streamed in over 110 community countries across the world. Uh, this is an area where I can go to learn with a beginner's mind and then reach into the community and see how I might be able to help. One more think, or as maybe my friend Jason Singer would say, one more think, something for you to think about. Can you do the same thing on Spotify as what I or on Apple Podcasts as I did on Google Podcasts? And I will leave you with that to experiment. I'm now going to open up the floor to questions and answers. But before I do so, I really want to thank you. Is that by showing up today, you have committed yourself not only to excellence in sourcing, but being a decent human being, somebody who wants to 
pursue allyship and somebody who wants to get beyond the pejorative of saying diversity for the sake of diversity, somebody who really wants to build for the future. I'll open up the, uh, it looks to me like we've got lots of people who have a lot of favorite podcasts, not my intended, uh, not my intended moniker. Um, but that's, that's what we're doing. Thank you for joining us. I appreciate it. I'll open up the floor to questions. Yes. Hey, Brian, thank you so much um, for, for sharing your story. In the beginning, I felt like, okay, so where is this going? Can we get actually some something concrete in terms of like, how do we then do it, right? And I love the second part of how you set the stage in the beginning and then actually showing us, so how do we actually engage on this, right? Um, question that immediately came up, right? So you found these different kind of like groups, right? That you're looking for. Can you make that a little bit more concrete is that then, so how do you then outreach and get tapped into that community? And how do you balance that work with, so these are kind of like two questions, right? But how do you balance that work in terms of your role as a sourcer of eventually getting diverse candidates in the door, right? And, yeah. and, and the time spent in cultivating these relationships where, yeah, some of these relationships might not lead to anything, right? Like, can you, can you share, 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 uh, shed your light a little bit on that? Yeah, so actually, um, let me give you a personal instance and also add, answer Jason Singer's story about initial engagement as an ally. Yeah. Is that when I was at Relis Technologies, um, an AWS, uh, an AWS partner, um, what we we had on site uh, a monthly meeting of individuals that were, for the better part, white engineers. Yeah. Right. So this worked two ways. It worked a way where instead of asking people to come into our house we asked different AWS engineering or black engineers and technology in Atlanta groups, hey, what would it be like if we provided a speaker? We can provide an outlet to help individuals find their next career move. But before they do that, let's build some trust here, yeah. right? What, you know, uh, there's some groups that you're going to reach out to that are going to say, well, why don't you sponsor the pizza? That's fine, but that's that that is that is what you're talking about about that spurious engagement. Yeah. If I invite, if if I'm invited into a group and I show up and I bring, you know, um, a a young African American female to the to the conversation, and she shows people how she built her career, how she grew her career, and then she says, "If you're interested in talking further, please let me know." And then she hands me those, those individuals that are interested, educated, and qualified for our opportunity. I should say interested and educated in our opportunity. And then as a recruiter, I get to qualify them. Or as a sourcer, I get to qualify them. I've actually amplified the engagement in the process. Mm -hmm. You know, there are a lot of there are a lot of things that 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 we see that we shouldn't be seeing, right? Like for instance, with female engineers, is that they get to their mid-30s and they they, they drop out of the workforce, right? They choose yeah. to become a mom. Okay, that's cool. Be a mom. I want my, my I got Maddie. Everybody knows that I spent, I spent half my time as a dad, maybe more than half of my time. <laughs> the reality of it is, is that what are we doing to engage with these populations to make sure that we are delivering what they need on their terms, right? Is it, is it making sure that if you're if you've returned to office that you have a suite set aside uh, as a nursery uh, or as a um, uh, or as a uh, as a, 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 a lounge for uh, for a, a mother who's just given birth to uh, to uh, I am lost on the word for this and I do not want to say the wrong thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 So. Uh, I mean, we see them at airports, but we can also put them in our office buildings like companies like ADP or um, Global Payments do here in Atlanta, uh, which make it a more inclusive environment that say, hey, and, and that's another thing. We also have to think about an inclusive environment of belonging so that we retain that talent as well. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, internal mobility is also super important to an organization. 
So what are we doing to make sure that our leaders that are diverse are going out and talking to those communities? We have to plug them into those communities. Maybe they're not aware of them. Um, and and that's play, that is playing the long game, but I guarantee you, you'll walk away. If you do a, if you do a meetup and you provide the, uh, you provide the speaker, you will walk away with 10 to 15 leads if there are 10 to 15 people in the room. Well, do you have a maybe like tangible experience when you've done this successfully, right? Like it's something to kind of like, and like maybe one of those, those, those moments when you've kind of like done, done the work and it left. Oh, I, I got a, I, I got a great one for you is that yeah. there was this, there was this wild and crazy tech company that I used to work for. We'll call them Twitter. And what we <laughs> did at Twitter it, I'm wearing Twitter blue today. I should be wearing McAfee red. Um, yeah. Is that is that I was not I was not immediately um, responsible for this effort, but this is an effort that was handled uh, that was arranged by Robert McFalls, uh, by Philip Kajic, and by uh, Cheyenne Reisner. And this was an instance where we had an online audio conversation around engineering and inclusivity and diversity at Twitter. Um, it was a great success. It put a lot of candidates into our pipeline that had questions about whether or not Twitter walked the walk or talked the talk when it came to diversity, because yeah. we were able to put out those managers in that environment to have that conversation up front so that people realized that this was a community that really did embrace inclusivity, belonging, diversity, and equity. Wow. Well. Yeah, and, and I gotta I gotta I gotta give a shout out to those three, right? Yeah. Rob, Cheyenne, Phil, awesome team to work with. Uh, they are all doing great things now and they are gonna continue to disrupt the status quo. And I am so glad that I got the opportunity to work with them. Yeah. Yeah. Are there any particular initiatives that you that you're now like kind of like bringing to the table at McAfee, for example, to uh, to do that? Yeah, um, actually, you know, I think that, that that might be a conversation for another time that we're kind of working on internally. Yeah. But as you know, at McAfee, uh, we are working on uh, salary transparency. We are working on, uh, 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 we are working specifically right now on parity in the workforce. Uh, we were just recognized by Newsweek magazine as being one of the most diverse workspaces in America. Wow. Um, I think that recognition is really uh, fuel in the tank, if you will. Yeah. It's not a pat on the back. It's you can do more, and we are, are going to do more with putting those individuals, uh, putting the, making sure that we put the right individuals uh, front and center to have conversations with different communities at different times to attract individuals to our opportunity because it's a great opportunity, yeah. and we are defending the internet. And if you are interested in defending the internet and making sure that people are safe with their identities. McAfee is a place for you. Come find. Okay, I got pitchy about McAfee. I didn't mean to get pitchy about McAfee. No worries, no worries, no worries, no worries, and 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 rightfully so. You're passionate about the company, which uh, which I uh, which I like, Brian. Um, Brian. So, in terms of sourcing, right? Like, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. Do we want to do some live sourcing? Oh well, Brian. If you, if you want to, we would love. Oh. Okay, hold on one second. Let me get a. Let me get a browser up and we will and we'll we'll do a little live sourcing for diversity. Does that sound like a plan? So good, Brian. So good. Uh, Love okay. It. Yes. All right. All right. So let's do this. Bingo, bingo, bango. Brian, I will go off screen so you can like share your screen and we we see you you on your screen. Okay. All right. So okay. boom, boom, yeah. boom, 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 boom. This is my background, real quick. I get a lot of questions about extensions that I'm using. You can hit me up on LinkedIn and I will answer that for you. So but great. right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to site colon yeah. Instagram.com and I am going to look on Instagram. And, and since we're doing this live, I have no yes. idea what's going to show up. Um, we are going to look for neo. Uh, we are going to look for nurses. Nurse. And we're going to look in Austin, Texas. And we're going to look for people who have a Gmail address so that we can reach out to them. And we're going to look for she or her or Ella, because we want to include Latinx mm. or black or Latinx. I don't know what this is going to produce. Okay. All right. Uh, 
um, I really needed to focus on nurse. Um, uh, let me see. Uh, da, 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 content. Oh, here we go. This is yeah. Janelle. I don't know what's going to happen here. Uh, this is Janelle. She's an Austin ATX. Um, she is a travel nurse and an aspiring nurse injector. Um, this is her Gmail address. What? Yeah. So, so we, we've got that now. Here's the, here's the conversation that we could have with Janelle based on her, on her um, profile. Yeah. Is that we know that she's into yoga. We yeah. also know that she's into sushi. Yeah. Uh, um, we have found um, a woman of color. This is, this is, this is an opportunity. We're going to hit the message button. Uh, I am BFX on, um, on, on Instagram. If anybody wants to follow me there. If you noticed, I just came up right here with a message, yeah. right? Um, and with a content creator. Is that Janelle see that you are a travel nurse that likes to en that that enjoys life's adventure. How cool. Um, since I'm not hiring for nurses, I, I, yeah. I, I may not be the best person to write this message, yeah. Yeah. But, but you see that I'm taking from the conversation about what Janelle is and who, who, uh, and, and who Janelle is speaking to and is sharing her content with. Yeah. Let's go, let's go and do, um, I'm going to use a similar string. Oh, notice that, notice that change. I'm going to use a similar string. I'm going to use, um, There's no difference in results if I use the, the bar or if I use or, but if I hit the backspace, it reduces my ors to lowercase. Oh. Is I'm gonna do um I'm gonna do site colon crunch base dot com and I'm gonna look for a um I, I look for engineers all day long, so engineers or developer. And I'm going to go to crunchbase.com. Um, Crunchbase, for those of you who aren't aware of it. Oh, look at that. Um, I have um, a grant for Black Girls Do Engineering. Mm -hmm. Who was the grant recipient? Who was the investor in that grant? There's a lot of information that I've got there that, that, that I can go to when the funding was announced. Um, there was a $5,000 grant. Yep. Um, we've got the opportunity to reach. And, and please note, Crunchbase has a paywall, and we just went beyond that. We just said, screw you, paywall. Bye. Um, we've got uh, Anna Margarita Mendina, who is a self-taught female engineer. As we can see, uh, she is a, I mean, if we're doing visual ID, we know it's a female if we're doing name ID as an investor, we've got Anna Margarita Medina. That is three A's. That gives me the idea that she, uh, Medina being a family name, but the other two names ending in a consonant that is associated with the, uh, and, and with the Latin languages as, as being female. We've got a website where we can visit her. We can visit her on Facebook. Uh, we know what she is. Uh, what she does, she speaks on all things site reliability engineering, DevOps, and reliability. She's a podcast host for On Call Me Maybe. This is this is gold, right? Like if you're a sourcer, you have got information right here that you can dig into and you can create a, a crafty message. When time permits, she leads efforts to dispel the stigma around mental health, so neurodiversity, and bring more black and Latinx folks into tech. Yeah. I, I, I'm like, okay, real quick, Adrian, tell these people it was not rehearsed. Like this was just like, oh, whatever. Yeah, we're gonna, yeah, like, we're just gonna do it, right? Yeah. So we, we have found somebody who wants to be involved in the conversation, who wants to help empower black and Latinx communities to go to go further than where they are today, yeah. right? Um, 
Uh, we've got, uh, oh, I can't open that because of my internet. Uh, okay, this is, this is her, I, I can't open her, her page, but she's at Uber. She had been at Gremlin. She's a developer advocate at Lightstep. Yep. So, so, so. Brian. Oh, wait, wait. Aaron Matthew was talking to me. Sorry. There we go. That's um, funny. Th there I go. I can reach out to her based on the bio that she gave me right here. And I also know that she's very involved in, in um, open source projects. That's yep. a side point. Adrian, go for it. What's up? So, right. So, and, uh, we do these like cool searches, right? Like the thing that I and like our team often struggles with is like, okay, this is all great, but there's so many false positives that, that come up. And you need to like spend significant amount of time before you find someone that is actually a fit for the job that you're hiring. Can you help us like understand like how much of that is, is like long-term relationship building versus how much, per how much percentage of time should you like do these type of searches, right? Because, yeah, it, it's it's forty, it's forty sixty. It's forty percent. It's forty percent instant result. It's sixty percent long term. Okay. Right. So, so here's the question that you're asking: Is you're saying, Adrian, if I heard you correctly, you're saying, Hey, Brian, how do I do this at scale? Thank you, Brian. Yes. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. So let's do this at scale, right? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna click backwards for a second, and I've got. Mary, Mariana, I've got um, Margarita, yep. I've got all these profiles, right? Yep. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one special word right here is I'm going to put in URL person and it should bring me, oh, uh, okay. I'm just going to put the word person. I thought it would bring me back. I thought it would, bring, woo, I thought it would bring me back the person profiles, right? Because um, let's try this. Let's go dit. Dit, dit. Okay, that didn't bring me back any love. Let's try this. Okay, now I've got person. I've got about 31,000 results, right? Of, of she previously worked as an engineer in UI. She, uh, Chuck Black, she is passionate about painting. Um, okay, so I, I'm going to narrow this down here and I'm going to get rid of uh, I'm going to get rid of black and Latinx and I'm only going to do female for a minute or identify as female. Bingo. I just narrowed this thing down even further. I narrowed it down to 40 uh, to 50,000 people. There are two things that I might do here. One is there's a free extension that's called link gopher. I'm going to click on that link and I'm going to extract all the links. There we go. They're all the profiles. Fantastic. Wonderful. I just scraped them. You're, you're done. You're thankful, right? Okay, so I've got, I've got all these person links that I can go into. Um, I could probably add location and make it a little bit, make it a little bit uh, more narrow and make it a little bit tighter. Let's go ahead and let's, um, let's do that. Let's say that we're looking for an engineer in Barcelona. Forty six results. Now I have forty six results. I saw that you are an engineer, a software engineer. Well, I got one chemical engineer with Irene in Barcelona. Uh, Maria, real quick, that extension that I just used is called Link Gopher. L I N K Gopher, G O P H E R, Link Gopher. But what I've what I've done is I now have I now have forty six profiles. So how do I reach out to them at scale? Yep. Is, that, is that you reach out to them and you say, and you, um, so the message that I would probably put together for, let me just, I just want to look at one. Yep. Primary job title is Android developer. Fantastic. Is that um, you would maybe put in there that I, hey, uh, Rossio, I am looking for Android developers um, that can travel anywhere in the European Union. Notice some of your experiences and want to, and also notice this. There's a gender field here too that we could have used on Crunchbase. Just, just, and that's self-selected information. This yeah. is all information that's populated uh, by Rocio. Or, or I am, I am butchering this name. Does any Adrian? How do I say this? I, I, okay. I, all right. All right. All right. 
You're asking it, it, for your pronunciation. All right. Um, so, so we've got that. Um, what I would do is I would go here and scrape their, their content or scrape their links. And I would then go through and I would message them because, um, and there are two ways that I can message them is that I have the opportunity to message them through LinkedIn because this is from their LinkedIn bio. They yep. plugged it in and I can put all these people into a project and I can mass message them that way. Or, or, uh, Maria, I'm about to give you another free extension. Are you ready? Whoop. Okay, hold on. Um, I got a lot of people talking to me. Sorry. I apologize for people seeing the conversations. Maria, are you ready for another free extension? Awesome. Okay. Um, it is called Get Magical, and it is going to cost you $0. Okay. Okay. So the question that you asked, Adrian, is how do I do this at scale, right? So what I'm going to do is I am going to go right down here and I am going to go hash, hash. And it pulls up all my messages and it's going to populate. I, this, is a, this is something that I, I worked up so I could spam my wife. Yeah. Is It says, I love bananas. Do you love bananas? I click on it and it says all variables and it grabs the information from their LinkedIn profile and it puts it into a, you like that, didn't you? Um, is that it puts it into the in mail. So that's how I do it at scale. Mm -hmm. And that, and, and with that, you know, the other thing that I can do is um, I have other filters that are built up that like, um, where I can go through and I can do the date that I send the message. There are all these dynamic fields. There are 20 different, there are 20 to 30 different dynamic fields that you can play with, with get magical. Um, it's G E T get magical. Um, and, and again, the cost for an individual user is free. Yep. The, if you want to use a team license, it's not coming up right now. Why is it not coming up? If you want to use, um, if you want to use, Becky, awesome question. Does that work on, on paid LinkedIn? So the answer is it works on paid LinkedIn and it works on free LinkedIn. It works actually, Becky, you want to Becky's a friend of mine on LinkedIn on Facebook, right? So I'm gonna I'm gonna open up Facebook for a second. Because it works anywhere that there's a friggin' text field, right? Is that I'm gonna send Becky a message. Oh, Becky, Becky's in for a treat. Right? Okay, so Becky, if I'm on Okay, there's Becky. Okay, real quick. If I go hash, hash. There we go. I just sent a message to her. And the same thing, if I had been on Becky's, um, if I'd been on Becky's profile, which I don't want to show off because that's Becky's privacy, but people can follow <laughs> her there and what have you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah is, that, is it anywhere that has a text box, right? Yeah. So like, I'm going to come back to Instagram for just a second. And uh, this is um, this is my wife. So I'm going to send her, um, I, I sent her pictures of food because I, I, I eat. Um, is that um, I love bananas. Do you love bananas? Insert uh, first name. There we go. I love bananas. Do you love bananas? She, she knows that she's getting that message because... Yeah. It's built It's built for her and it's built for demos. Yeah. Okay, hold on. And then this one, um, Becky, this is how I connect with everybody on Friday on LinkedIn is I hit hash hash F and it pins in the message that I just, that I just put out to you, right? Um, so Adrian, did that answer how I do this at scale? So one, one additional question to this, right? So, so I really liked how you narrowed this down, but still let's, let's say that we're looking for a female senior full stack developer with um, with Python, for example, right? So, if we want to in in Barcelona, so if we want to narrow it down that much, is is that okay? This is this is here we go. Dun 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 dun. dun, dun. 
I'm going to cheat. I'm going to use LinkedIn. Um, Jane is what the hashtag? Is it in the hashtag? Is what in the hashtag? I didn't do a hashtag. Um, okay, Python developer, engineer, she, her, Ella, um, Python, Barcelona, let it ride. Okay, so here we go. Here are the ads. Yep. She's in Croatia. I got Barcelona right here, right? Maybe, and wait, I'm going to go back and I'm going to put ES. Sorry, I didn't know my country code. Um, here we go. I have Laura. I have Ella. I have Josefina. I have Ellie. I have Laura. There you go. That's what you wanted, right? Yep. And of that, I have 2,400 results. So there, there are a few different ways that I could slice and dice this is um, I could go in and add everybody to a, uh, a LinkedIn profile, or if I don't have LinkedIn recruit, and I just assume nobody has LinkedIn recruiter, right? That's why I use a tool like get magical for free, right? Like, um, but like uh, Laura F, um, there we go. A viewer and recruit. Oh, wait, hold on. Real quick, I just want to show that Get Magical works in Recruiter. Is that? Um, yeah, that's that's where Jane's question goes because you you mentioned hash hash when you do it, but I think it's slash slash, right? Sla so, slash slash. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's right, this so where, that's this that's is, where from Jane the, came from. So it's slash this is slash, Laura, and then it gets slash blue. slash. So yeah. I'm going to do. So Laura's right there. I'm going to do the slash, and it's going to pull up. All my shortcuts. I really appreciate you. I'm interested in my new adventure, right? It, it, it works inside of LinkedIn Recruiter. It works. In, it just, it has to be a text box. That's it. Yeah. It's the only requirement. Um, I, now my wife is asking me why I sent her a chat about, she knows right. that I'm doing a webinar. <laughs> um, um, so we, we've got that and we can, we can do that piece of the puzzle. Yeah. And that's how, that's one of the ways that I would do it at scale. So good. So good. Um, what, what, what else, what else do we got? Um, what else do we got? So I think these were like the main questions in the, in, in a chat that I saw coming through. This was, I loved it, Brian, that you put on, that we did some live sourcing. Honestly, this made it so, so, so concrete. Um, starting from high level, what we should do and how we should value, then showing like how can we tap into those communities and then actually showing the work, Brian, absolutely love the cascade down. And I think this is super valuable for our audience and especially for the people also that, that are going to watch the recordings, uh, Brian. Awesome. Well, you know, look, I, I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to do as well as Vanessa Rath did. I, I know that I came up short because Vanessa is here and I'm here and and, and what have you, but, but like, you know, there was no everyone has their expertise. Everyone has their experience. So there's no need to like judge or compare. Honestly, Brian, I want to thank you so much for being, uh, being our presenter today um, and showing so much uh, valuable content, especially to like dare to put on screen and do live sourcing because not a lot of people like dare to do that because they're afraid to like make mistakes. And you just show like, that you're living and breathing actually what you're talking about. So, so real quick, the only other thing I would add, and yes. Jane asked me, she was like, yo, B, can you share the strings? Um, Jane, you know, to reach, you can reach me on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm pointing to it because it's on this screen. Yeah. Uh, if you want to, if you, if you are a sourcer or a recruiter and you got questions and this didn't answer them for you and you don't want to ask them in the chat, I'm available from 3 p.m. Eastern to 6 p.m. Eastern on Fridays. I run my office hours. Yeah. If you got a question, don't hesitate to reach out. Adrian will be more than happy to put you in contact with me too. Yes. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I really appreciate you. Amazing, Brian. And guys, just look up Brian Fink on LinkedIn. He will respond. And if you have any questions, just reach out and connect with him directly. Brian, again, thank you so much. Awesome sauce. Let's jam. All right, ladies and gentlemen, on the clock. And how interesting was this to do actually some live sourcing for the first time in a webinar series. Guys, um, I'm excited that we're rounding the halfway uh, of, of our webinar series, but we're not done yet. Because next week we got Mike Cohen, AKA the Batman coming and presenting. And he's going to be talking about sourcing strategies, the search strategy beyond the buzzwords. Um, 
I assume that the majority of you will have heard of Mike. If not, definitely show up next week because Mike is one of the most well-known sourcers and public speakers out there, a close friend and excited to have him on stage. And um, if you haven't already, please follow us on LinkedIn, follow us on YouTube. We'll send the recordings after. If you have any questions or whatsoever, come to us and, and reach out. And I'm looking forward to welcoming you again next week.